Howdy. <laughs> I did get some questions for like a Q&A, so I might as well answer some of those, you know? Never mind. Okay. I like frogs, okay? Just the blow up on frogs. Gosh, they're so good. Um, I don't even know where I get most of my frogs from, but this one always works pretty good. From Hawkeye underscore one sixteen thirty two, Rad and Real Arsenal favorite setup. Okay, interesting. So, I actually bought my spinning rod way before I knew how to fish, and it's just a mega cast from like I got it from Cabela's for like forty bucks. But you know, it does the job. It doesn't really matter what pool you have, because I usually just use that one for Texas rigs and crappie. Um, otherwise, I have a Silver Max from Obu Garcia with a tournament special rod. I personally wouldn't recommend getting the Silver Max. Um, I mean, I have it. I've just found that I've had a lot of problems with it, kind of. The button just pushes in super dry, if you can hear that. Like, I don't know if that's a thing, like when you, I don't know, it just doesn't press in the best as I just burned us that, okay. Um, yeah, it just doesn't click down the best, and I don't know if that's just because I, like, am kind of hard on my poles, and, um, leave them in my car a lot, and I drive down dirt roads, so then dirt gets in them. I don't know if that's part of the problem, but I just have found that the Silver Max doesn't have the best button on it um but i did buy the oh sorry i was fishing earlier <laughs> um the revo x from abu garcia and as of right now i love it like it is so big of a like a huge difference from my other rod i hear this crisp is what that is anyways um, with a Pro Qualifier 2 rod, also love it. It's super lightweight. Um, I did get the medium to heavy action just because I'm constantly like hook setting hard on the banks and stuff and pulling through seaweed and stuff so then the rod will have a longer uh, durability. So if you're fishing ponds a lot, I'd recommend getting a medium to heavy action or medium action just because um, you're gonna need some more force behind when you end up setting the hook and pulling through weeds and stuff. You might want to just to like not break it, you know? Next question. Personal best bass. 5.24. And 23 inches, I want to say 22 or 23 inches, is actually like right here. I caught it here. Um, I'll show you what I used on that. I kind of caught it I want to say either late, um, I want to say I caught that one late summer. I'll have to look at the date that I caught that one, but though it, it was like probably around 7 o'clock, sun was going down. Um, I was casting out with my spinning reel and I got a massive pull, like it was a huge pull and I still think that bass was bigger, but doesn't everybody. Um, got a huge pull and my line snapped. Moment of silence for that. That was just it was a sad, sad moment for me. My line snapped and I was like, oh, I just lost such a nice bass. So then I was gonna just go home and call it a day, but then I retied and it is so important to retie because if you don't, then you miss out on a nice bass and then you hate yourself for it. So retie, always. So I retied. And then I put on the same um, rig. I'll actually show you. Um, my papa, so fun fact, my papa actually caught his personal best. I don't know what his is. I think I'll have to ask him. But he caught his on pretty much the same thing. He caught his on an all orange lizard with no red tail, no pink tail. He caught his on a lizard, okay? And then I caught mine I want to say on one of these with a green tail, just an orange lizard, um, some black specks, orange pumpkin, green tail, and then on a Texas rig. And then I used a half ounce drop, or half ounce bullet weight on that, 
and then with just your normal uh, hook. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what I was using, and I was using that all day. And then, so my line snapped, so then I retied, and I was like, heck, I'll just give one more cast. And I did, and then I got another huge pull. And then, yeah, it was super exciting because earlier that day I had caught a, like, I want to say almost a four pounder, and like, that would have been my personal best. But then I like kept fishing and then I got that five pounder and then I like stayed after sundown and I didn't get another. But it was still super cool. If you think the spot you're fishing at is like not working, stay there for at least like 10, 15 more casts. You're eventually gonna make a bass mad and they're gonna strike. Um, so stay in the same spot, even if you think you've been there for like already 30 minutes and you're casting literally in the same spot a bunch of times and it's not working stay there for 10 more casts like when you tell yourself i'm gonna leave to a new spot 10 more casts and then you can leave um because that's what i was doing i was just fishing in the same spot the whole day and i was like i need to move spots but i stayed there because i was like i'm just gonna make a bass mad and i'm gonna keep going and that's what we did and then we got that one and then next one is Captain underscore hooks. Very, very interesting. Um, do smallies fight different? I actually don't know. I've never fished for small, uh, smallmouth. Um, I've just gone for largemouth and yeah. Um, I've gone, so I've gone bow fishing. I've gone with my brother quite a bit. We always go bow fishing and uh, get some gar. And then a lot of my cousins actually go noodling and that's always fun to see them bring back some huge catfish. And then there's walleye where I go, but I haven't gone specifically fishing for walleye. Um, I usually just go fishing for largemouth or crappie because I actually end up eating crappie and filleting them myself, so that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, but mainly just crappie because you can eat those and then bass because those are just, or largemouth bass because those are um, more of a competition fish. Um, Jarrett Schneider, what age did you discover fishing? So, I want to say, I, I honestly have no idea. Um, ever since, I mean, there's pictures of me, like, three years old, just fishing, like, holding a bluegill with my dad. But my papa is super big into fishing, and he kind of, um, I don't know, brought me to it. Uh, I always go to him with any questions and stuff, and whenever I'm not sure what to use, I'll call him up and... He'll just, yeah. And anytime, like, I catch a nice fish, I'll call him up, and we just have that um, relationship where my accomplishments are his accomplishments, and he always gets so excited to talk about fishing with me. So, yeah, so he brought me to fishing. He was gonna actually, I think, he fished um, competitively for a very long time, but then wanted to start a family, so then that's where all of us came into play. And, yeah. Um, so probably ever since I could walk, I don't know. But I, I didn't get like, I didn't get like huge into fishing until like, I want to say this summer, because a lot happened this summer, um, this year actually, and I wanted to have something to go to, I guess, and this kind of came to be that. Um, fishing was kind of my outlet. I had some sad stuff go on this year, um, from losing couple of my grandparents and yeah just some sad things happened and this was kind of my outlet somewhere to go um I don't know just be in the presence of nature I guess and I don't know whenever I go fishing I'm just overwhelmed with you know how beautiful everything is <laughs> like you, you look out here and just how beautiful the water is how beautiful the fish are like it just is reminds you on how small we are, I guess, and how big this huge picture is. Anyways, on a better, happier note, um, Connor Farrell, I think that's what that says, uh, tips for starters, because he said he doesn't fish largemouth often, um, but he found some ponds near him that are actually stocked with largemouth. Um, I want to say, don't fish right now. <laughs> If you live anywhere in the Midwest, I would not recommend starting fishing right now because you're gonna get burned out pretty fast because it's not the best fishing right now. 
but come spawn and summer, fishing gets better, it gets easier. Not easier, but you get more rewards, I guess. So I'd go, I, I wouldn't spend a ton on fishing stuff right away. I'd talk to all the people that you can and get to know the fish around you and what they end up biting because it's different for every region. Like here, they bite jigs pretty good, and then in some places they don't. Some places they don't bite any Texas rigs. Um, it all kind of just depends on where you live. Like some places don't bite frogs. Like right now, if I were to throw a frog, I would probably not catch anything. So it depends on the time of year and where you're at and, I don't know, weather, just a lot of stuff. But I think I started out, I just bought a spinning reel with a 10 pound test line and I bought some hooks, some lizards, and some cinco's, some little weights, and that's where I started out. Um, yeah, I don't really know. You don't need a whole lot of fancy stuff to go fishing. It's, I mean, of course you're gonna need to invest someday, but do what works. If you find something that works, just keep doing it and try to, I don't know, try to read where you're at. I don't know if that helped. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, just message me if you have any more questions to Connor. Um, do you hunt? That was a lot of questions from a lot of people. No, um, I don't. I really want to. Um, that is one of my biggest goals. I cannot wait till I get to go on my first hunt. Um, I actually, in like fourth grade, I did end up killing a woodchuck. Um, I'll have to put a picture of, of that somewhere. I don't really know where, but it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's a whole story in itself, but I did kill a woodchuck and I did skin it and that is hanging up in my cabin. So that's kind of exciting, but I've never gone like officially hunting. Um, I used to be really big into like archery and I got like a bow from Cabela's and did that like all the time and then was really big into BB guns and stuff like that, but I never really had the chance to go hunting. Um, but yeah, we're looking for that chance, and then I'm sure once I start, I'm not going to be able to stop. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do have my hunter safety, so that, I don't know. I went on, I had like a huge phase of being super outdoorsy, and then I, I stopped all up until like freshman, sophomore year. I wasn't as like into fishing and hunting if you'd call it that like and I I don't know how to explain that but I wasn't into that but now I'm, I'm back in I'm back to who I was <laughs> um and then all the taxidermy in my room a lot of that is from my great grandpa he was big into hunting but it never really got passed down to my grandpa and to my dad so then I don't really have that but yeah that's where all the taxidermy comes from and from like cool little auction places that we've gone to um I just think it's such a beautiful art, so I love having it in my room and being able to see taxidermy, like, it is such a beautiful art that is so underrated, I think, by, like, the world in general because of hunting is, like, looked down upon sometimes, but I think it's all beautiful. And then, there's another question, a lot of people ask if I ice fish, yes, I do. Um, my papa takes me out a lot and we end up using like a fish finder so that makes it a lot more fun we have a little tent that we set up a little hut um so hopefully i'll be doing that once the ice comes it's still not ice but it's getting there it's really close to ice season um fish are slowing down yet again <laughs> all right so that's my video um like comment subscribe do all the usual um i have no idea when my next video is gonna be um, once spawn comes, I will try to be more consistent and post more, um, but right now it's kind of hard because fishing is hard to do right now. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and see you next time.